He says in verse 13 these words, While evil people and imposters will go on from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. Timothy, it's not going to get better. Just get ready for it. Look at my life as an example. Think of the words that John said in 1 John chapter 4. Greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. But, but Lord, you don't understand. You don't understand the pressure that I'm under. You don't understand the things that are happening at school or in my home or in my workplace. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The battle has already been won. The war is essentially over, but we must fight each day in the strength that Jesus Christ gives us. I, I think of the words that Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. You will have trouble. But fear not. Take heart. I have overcome the world. Sometimes when you're a little child, I, I, again, I think of little Sasha. She calls me her superhero because to her, I am big, I am strong, I can defeat her mean little brothers. So whenever her brothers are chasing after her, she says, Dad, superhero, I need you. And I say, I will come and rescue you because I am big and I am strong and I can help you. That's what Jesus Christ is saying, not in the same way. He says, you know what? When troubles come and things are difficult, he says, I am the superhero. I have overcome Satan. I have overcome death. You can trust me. You can have integrity. As we said at the beginning, what you feed grows. Are we feeding on the word of God so that we grow? But what we feed with, what we feed on, determines what kind of health we have. Are we feeding spiritually on things that are going to help us become more healthy? Now, in verses 14 to 17, I simply give it one word. I just call it preparation. Knowing that trouble is going to come, knowing that Paul has this great example, what should we do to prepare? And specifically, Timothy, what should you do to prepare? He says this in verse 14. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings which are able to make you wise for salvation. Very simply put, he's saying, listen, Timothy, ever since you were a little boy, your mother, your grandmother, godly people around you have taught you the scriptures. They had the Old Testament scriptures, and they taught Timothy, and they taught him well. He says, you know it. Says Timothy, ever since you've met me, you have heard the gospel stories about Jesus Christ. You have seen me as we've planted churches, as we've told people about Jesus Christ. He says, Timothy, just continue in that. You're on a path like this. Timothy, stay on that path. Don't get distracted. Keep pursuing me. Keep following me. You can be prepared. He says, you have heard these things, and from childhood you're acquainted with the sacred writings. They're able to make you wise. There are so many applications just to these verses. I could talk to parents, and I could say, Parents, please train your children, educate your children in the things of Jesus Christ. I could talk to those who are grandparents and the older ones and say, Listen, Timothy's grandmother was significant. What are you doing as grandparents to build spiritual depth into your grandchildren? I could talk about the Word of God, how important it is for salvation and for life, and that would be a good topic to do. I, I can encourage you, as Paul does to Timothy, stay in the fight. Don't quit. Don't give up. There are so many themes here in these verses. But I want to choose just one because of our time that we have, and it's this. The Word of God is central to everything that we are and everything that we believe. When he says in verse 16, then, all Scripture is breathed out by God, is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be competent and equipped for every good work. The, the people that you meet in life, at this stage of life, or a year from now, or 10 years from now, what they need in order to be equipped to handle what's happening in the world, happening in the culture, happening in their community, the answers are here. You say, well, it, it doesn't talk about Kursk, Russia. It doesn't talk about North Dakota. No, it doesn't. But the principles that address what's happening in your life, in your world, 
the, the, the principles for finding those solutions are right here in this book. He says, Timothy, here's what you need to know about this book. It is profitable in every way. It is breathed out by God. That's where we get the word inspiration. All of it, all 66 books, all 66 books were not here yet when this letter was written. But the canon of Scripture, when it was being put together over the years, and by the end of the first century, they were pretty well already had a consensus on what those books were, that all of those books God breathed into human authors, about 40 different people, wrote down the truths of God's Word using their personalities. He says, this is the Word of God. He says, it's profitable. It's profitable for teaching that you can share with other people. It's profitable for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. One author summarized those four ideas in this way. I, I like the way how he said it, so I'll give him credit. He said, teaching means what is right. Reproof is showing you what is not right. Correction is how to get right, how to become right. And training means how to stay right. I like that. Teaching, show me what's right. Reproof, show me what's not right. Correction how to get right when I have been wrong, and training how to stay right because I want to stay on that path. If you're an athlete in training, the coach is going to say, this is what you need to do to get your peak speed, your peak endurance to be able to win the race. That training is incredibly important. You must follow my instruction. The thing that we want to leave with our people is this. You will not be able to live a healthy Christian life without this book. I don't mean that you have to have all of the pages because there are some countries in which one page would be so priceless that they don't even have all of God's Word because it's illegal in the country. But what I mean is the truth in this book, without it, it is not possible to be as healthy as you can be. In this book, you will find truth. In this book, you will find light. In this book, you will find life. You will find the future. You will hear about the past. You will hear about the cross of Jesus Christ. You will learn so much in this book. You need to look at it as God's message to us. When Trudy and I were dating years ago, we wrote letters to each other. Now, I know in this modern age, it's about text messaging and maybe email. Probably email will be gone in a few years, too. But back in the years when we were dating, we didn't have email. We wrote letters and cards. And a number of months ago, I was cleaning up some files that I had, and I, I found a collection of Trudy's cards and letters. And I started looking through them, and I looked at those words, and I go, oh, man, it was, it was so great to read her words. We were just falling in love with each other, and the words were sweet, and they were tender. It was just great. But something has happened over the years, and, and it's a good thing. While in the initial phase, it was full of love and emotion and tenderness, over the years, maybe the emotion is different, but the depth has increased. That when Trudy writes me an email now, or when we sit down and have a conversation, that the depth of our relationship is such that when we were dating, we talked about things about this deep. When we're married now, our relationship is such that we can talk about things this deep. Matters with our children, matters with our culture, matters with our marriage. The, the depth of faith that she has and the depth that I have learned over the years means that our relationship is much richer than it was at the beginning. It was wonderful at the beginning, but it is deeper now. What Paul is saying to Timothy and to each one of us here, he says, the depth of understanding that you can have in a relationship with Jesus Christ, as taught in the pages of this book, can increase and go deeper as the years go by. I think of the scriptures that have meant so much to me over the years. Sometimes I will write about them. Sometimes I will pray them. I think of the words in, in Jeremiah. I, I know it's the words of God to the nation of Israel. 
but I have read those words as if they were by application God's words to me. When God says, I know the plans for you, declares the Lord, plans for wholeness and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me. When you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you, declares the Lord. Yes, it was a message for the nation of Israel. But I wonder if God is also saying that to me too. Ruth, look for me. Search me. I, I, I want to be found. I, I tell the story of when our children were a little bit younger, we would play the game hide and seek. I think probably every culture has a game of hide and seek where one person hides and the other person covers their eyes and counts to 10 or 100. And then they'll say, I'm coming. I'm going to find you. And so what happens is if I'm the one who's hiding, because I'm an adult and I'm probably more intelligent than our children when they're little, I could hide myself so well that they would never find me. Our house has a, a main floor and it has an upstairs and we'll say, maybe they were in the living room in our main floor and I go quietly up the stairs. I go into our bedroom and we have a closet that which we can close the door. I can go into the closet, close the door very quietly and hide in the clothes in the back corner. I can be so quiet that they would never find me. But think about it. If they could never find me, what would be the fun of the game? They go, I can't find dad. I guess I'll go play outside. That wasn't very fun. The reality is I want them to find me. I just want it to be a challenge. So here's what I'll do. And we'll say Sasha again. Let's say Sasha is looking for dad. Dad, where are you? I can't find you. Dad, are you in this room? And so as she gets close to the room in which I'm hiding, <clears throat> I'll maybe cough. <clears throat> and she go, is he in this room? And then she say, Dad, are you in here? And I still want her to keep looking. I don't want her to find me quite yet. So maybe I'll, I'll, I'll tap on the wall. Dad, is that you? And she'll come over to the closet. And she'll open the door and I'll say, boo! And she'll scream and she'll jump and then she'll give me a big hug and I'll say, I wanted her to find me. But I wanted to know how badly she wanted to find me. What God is saying to the nation of Israel, if you want to find me, I'm here. I'll make some sounds to let you know that I am God, I am holy, I am the God of Israel. And he says to his church today, he says, do, do you want to be in relationship with me? God doesn't force himself on anyone. Do you want to find me? If you seek me with all of your heart, you will be found. And God's going, I'll make sure that you find me. Friends, it, integrity means wholeness and completeness. It doesn't mean perfection. What it means is that we're followers of Jesus Christ. And in our churches, as we follow him, as we know him, God says, I will let you see who I am. I am God, I am holy, and I want you to be like me. The section that we've just completed, chapter 3, verses 10 through 17, is this description of what a life of Christian integrity looks like. When we come back after a short break, we start with the fourth and final chapter. Paul is beginning to wrap his thoughts up. He's about ready to say goodbye. He's about to write the final words that he's ever going to write in this life. We strive to serve the contemporary Christian community and with a variety of Christian educational and evangelistic resources. To see TVS resource base, please visit tvseminary.com. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 10, 11. How to give to TVS Ministry. You may give online at efta.org slash give now 
in the description place, write Russia Distance Learning account number 24109-0150. Or make checks out to EFCA, write on the check memo line, Russian Distance Learning account number 24109-0150. Mail to EFCA Donor Services, 901 East 78th Street, Minneapolis, Minnesota. 55420-1300 or send your gift through PayPal for tvs.gift at gmail.